Using church intimidation, controlling manipulation, Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two as sword, MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there, not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal practice. Shabbat Shalom, Barakatha. Welcome again to the Crystal Jones Show. It's the show that's all about life's balance. I'm your talk show host, Crystal Jones. I greet you in the name of Ahaya, Bahashem Yeshaya, Wabarakwadash. So you can check out my show every Saturday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on bronxnet.org, channel 951 and 2137, the Inspired channel on your cable channels. Also, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel where you like and share my videos at the Crystal Jones TV show. Also, check out my other platforms, Facebook, uh, Crystal Jones Pictures and Videos. Also, Instagram at the Crystal Jones Show and HebrewConnect.tv. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to go uh, to the scripture of today which is 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and the third verse. All right. We've been doing, um, you know, a, a series on Hebrew Israelite women and the Bible and today. So um, we're, tr you know, getting back into the order of things that God originally had for us. So in 1 Corinthians 11, it tells us, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the man has a head that he has to answer to. And the head of that man is Christ. Because remember, he was first made in the image of God. And then we came out of his rib, right? And the head of the woman is the man. Because we came from the man, right? And the head of Christ is God. So there's hierarchy, you know, from God to Christ, to the man, to us. That doesn't make us least important, but we all have different roles to play. God is God above all else. He runs and rules everything, okay? Even if you, even if people think they're getting away with things, they're not. He's letting things play out and he's giving them grace and mercy so that they'll come to their senses and realize that he's God and they're not. So, uh, remember in creation, be, before creation, God had angels. Okay, so Christ was one of his angels, but he was the son of God. He was, um, you know, out of all of the angels, he was called the son of God, right? So he was the one that God sent to redeem us back to mankind, right? So remember that um before creation before the creation of man and um you know the birds the trees and all of that kind of stuff there was something that happened in heaven and that was lucifer felt that he wanted to be god so he tried to exalt himself above god and got cast out of that area of heaven he was hurled down to the earth Okay, so from there, he created his, he, he started enticing the angels to follow him. So there was a group of angels that did follow him and they fell to the earth. All right, now that same group of angels decided once man was created, they decided that they, in Genesis, um, you can read, you know, in your own time, I've covered it before, the sixth chapter where they came down and cohabitated with women. And that was against what God had for us. All right. So you see that, ooh, me, you see that within, sorry, the story of mankind that many things happen that offset us and those things that offset us basically were through uh, things that fallen angels presented to us, like in the Garden of Eden, when um, the serpent, which was a, a seraphim, right, 
a fallen seraphim, um, you know, said to Eve, well, you can be just as wise as God. He just doesn't want you to know that. And he, you know, talked her into eating from the, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which we weren't supposed to eat from, right? So that being that we were tricked in that, and then we uh, were able to influence Adam to also eat, you know, mankind fell into sin, okay? But what was the whole, that whole situation, as I said before, um, looks like she wasn't covered like how this hierarchy says that, you know, God is first, then Christ, then the man, then the woman. Okay, how is it that this fallen seraph was able to convince Eve to go against what God said and to um, get her husband to do the same, to eat along with her, right? So, of course, um, from there, things started to spiral downhill, okay? And we are always known as the seducers. You know, we, we carry a bad rep. Okay. And, you know, this caused mankind to fall. And you had the flood of Noah and um, all of that kind of stuff down through creation and different things that happened. You had Jezebel. You, had, you know, you had so many different things. And because of this, we were labeled, you know, as bad people, um, even to this day, especially our people, we're considered, you know, the bottom of the battle, right? But the thing is, we uh, do, you know, due to the first um, time that we were fooled and deceived and stuff like that. Uh, we became the ones who would most likely be deceived when different things would happen. That's why we're blamed for everything now. We're blamed for um, the single households. We're blamed for when the boys, you know, if we, we raise men by ourselves that, you know, um, things go wrong because the order, everything is now out of order. So we need to you know, review this and check things out. Um, what is our part? What what do we need to do to get to where we need to be in this day and time? Because so many of our people, not just our people, but so many people in different nations, if they be honest, a lot of people are not even getting married. So this is a dynamic that needs to stop because each nation of people is supposed to continue. But in every nation, you have a lot of people that are just not getting married anymore because people went away from the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord, right? And some of it started, a lot of it started once we got over here to what they call the so-called new world, even though, you know, the, the tribe of Gad was already here, the Indians, they were already here. But you had the European people that came and, you know, took took over, right? So when they took over, of course, to keep uh, people deceived, um, there were things that had to be in place. But I'm going to come back with that. I'm going to take a short break, and I'm going to come back with what they fooled us with, all right? So let's go to a break. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. 
When I adopt a turtle, I discover all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Okay, so one of the things that happened was, okay, we, you would hear a lot about, you know, the slave trade and things like that, how things went down. And we also get conflicting stories because we hear uh, African people will say, well, you're not from us. You're, you're not a part of us. Um, we're different from you. And they're right because we as a people, Israelite people, remember, we originally came from Jerusalem. Now, at that time, a lot of most of the people on the continent of Africa, we looked a lot alike. Sometimes the hair might have been a little different. Our hair was more woolly. The Egyptians, their hairs, they're they're dark, but their their hair was more stringy. Um, the Africans, you know, we all kind of blended in a lot in a lot of ways, right? But we from we were from different countries on that continent. Remember, Africa's a continent; it's not a country. But when we lost that lost that last war, the Roman and Jewish war, our people ran into the parts of Africa. Now they didn't want us to know that because they wanted to group us together as a people that were just lost. So when we ran into the different areas of Africa, that's when we got sold into slavery. We were tricked into um, going to different areas where um, you had um, white um, slave leaders, slave people, you know, slave uh, masters that would come and, um, you know, uh, catch us down at the shores of the beaches or different things like that and put us on boats and chains and all of that kind of stuff. All of that is true and bring us here. So if you keep hearing stories about we were indentured servants, that's a bunch of garbage. Okay, when we arrived on the boat, you would see sometime our tribe name it would say tribe of Judah, tribe of Ephraim, whatever tribe we came from, because wherever we went in the earth, they kept track of us because they knew we were from Jacob. Jacob's Jacob is Israel. He's the one whose name was changed to Israel. Well, the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jacob is our forefather. Now, his twin brother is Esau. Esau is the one who left off from the Hebrew uh, teachings and ways of life and mixed in with the people who were part Nephilim and then eventually went to the areas of Europe, okay, which would be uh, the European people that you know today, most of them are from Esau, which are Edomites, right? So at best, they would be like our cousin because Jacob and Esau were cousins. I mean, were brothers. They're twin, they're twin brothers, right? So now when we get here to this place they call the New World, right? Which was prophesied would happen to us in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, okay? Um, we get here and so they've got to get us to forget where we came from. So... You had the Catholic Church that made up a lot of different things so that we would um, not know who we were, okay? Because as each generation went on, our story sometimes didn't follow, okay, of where we really came from. So we started thinking that what they called us was right, that they would call us African Americans when we're Hebrew Israelites, right? So. When we get here, they figure since we were spiritual people, that they would fool us. Okay, so they wanted to make themselves not the Gentiles and make us the Gentiles. So now you get a switching out of the people. So what they did was they gave us this picture here of Cesare Borgier. All right, let's look at that. Okay, so remember... Cesare Borgia was a part of a Italian family in um, in Europe, okay? And they took his picture because they felt that 
it looked more, you know, like something that we could accept. He looked the part that he could play uh, who America calls Jesus and who we call Yeshia is his Hebrew name, right? So they changed him from a black man to a white man. Now, put up the picture of Yeshia Christ. This is what the Bible says Christ looked like. Okay, so if we go to Revelations, we're going to go to the first chapter and the third through the 15th verse. And it says, uh, right, we're, we're Revelation 1, I'm sorry, 13 through 15, sorry. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, who is Christ, clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool is like our hair. Our hair is woolly, all right? As white as snow. When we get older, we get gray hair, right? Woolly, woolly hair does not belong to white people. Woolly hair is our hair. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. It's not white skin. It's brown. As if it burned in a furnace. So it's a pretty dark color. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So the picture that I showed you with the black man is what Christ looked like. Okay. So when he returns, this is what you're going to see. You're not going to see Cesare Borgia. You're not going to see an Italian man. <laughs> you're going to see a black man coming through the sky. Okay. So. That was the first trick. And a lot of our people even left the church because of that. I know people who said they were like, I can't with these pictures that they have on these stained glass windows of these white people because our people were not white. If you read through the Bible, you know that. It tells you even in the Old Testament what God looked like, right? We were made in his image. Okay, now, as time went on and people moved to like the Caucasus Mountains and things like that, that's where you get the whiter skinned people. Also through leprosy and things like that too. So they do come from us. Okay, but Hebrew Israelites are always and always have been black people. I don't know why they call us black Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew Israelites are black people, okay? So this is why we have so many problems here because two, peop two uh, nations of people cannot reign at the same time. So this is the reign right now of the Europeans, all right? Now, if you when you read in Second Ezra, it tells you Esau is the end of this world as we know it. Okay, he's the end of this world, but Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Remember when they were in the womb with their mother, Esau came out first, but Jacob had him by the heel, and Jacob was the chosen one. We were the ones to that God chose to bring the people back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. And when Christ returns, when he gets all, you know, he's coming back, uh, not as they told us with the rapture. When you read in Ezra, it tells you when he comes back, he's coming back for vengeance because all of this technology and crazy stuff that they're coming up with now, that stuff has got to be vanished. Because in order for Christ to rule and reign, he has to set down the order. So he's coming back for vengeance. He's coming with 10,000s of angels. All right. And that's going to be to wipe out all of that stuff that they're coming out with now. Okay. So in the meantime, we as a people have to get ready. And 
Israelite women, we are very important in the order of things. Okay, we have to get back in order with our men. We have to learn how we're supposed to be. Um, we're supposed to be married. We're supposed to have children. Okay, there's a certain divine order that God had us in. Okay, first, you're dating, you know, you, you, you know, that's that stage where you, you know, seeing if you two are compatible. After that is your engagement. After that is marriage. And then the children, we have to get back to that. And I'm not picking on you if that's not how it turned out for you. But I'm saying we have to get back to the order of things so that the children coming behind us will follow suit. Because all of this other stuff that we've been um, that we've been doing, I may have to um, I may have to call for another break. I'm gonna call for another break, okay? I'll be right back and then I'll explain some more. All right, stay tuned. Every day, every day, millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together and discover how accepting our differences can, can make, make us stronger. stronger. Okay, so we're back. So what we're going to, you know, so we have to get back in the order that God had us to be. Not that we're less important. We're not, we're, we're very important. Okay. Because we set the tone for the households. We help our men to meet what um, the what the plan is for our family. Each family has different gifts and talents and things like that. And we know the children very well. Okay. So we have to now get back to... Um, getting together with our men and, you know, seeing what does God have for that household, all right? And how can we meet that, both spiritually as well as naturally, because spiritually, we need to have our uh, house in order, all right? We need to have that relationship again with the Lord. We need to stop following all of these different things, witchcraft and all kind of stuff that you know that stuff is come on now you should know by now that's not God's divine order so we need to have our households in order all right um get together talk with our men discuss our differences because we've been so far out there for so long you know that we've developed these type of mentalities that are uh they they they're not they're not user friendly as far as um you know being able to be a mate to somebody so we need to uh get back to the original order of how God made things and I'm not trying to like I said again I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't be working or nothing like that no you can you both can work but work together so that, you know, bring your things together so that you all can um, start business, start a business of your own. You know, give, have something that you can pass down to your children. You know, um, we don't want to keep being the angry black woman's stereotype. You know what I'm saying? That people say we are. And for some, it probably it probably are angry because of the things that we've been through. Okay, they did a lot to break up our families, um, the welfare system because you couldn't have the man in the household. Um, so many different things they did to break up our families. Okay, and we're the poster child of it. It's always the black woman is the treacherous one and 
<laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So we need to um, learn to talk things out with these men in a non-threatening way because they are the heads. So they're going to, you know, be a little masculine or whatever, but it's not what you say. Sometimes it's how you say it. You know, we need to work on how maybe we, we talk to them. None of us is perfect at that. We're not. I'm not trying to act like, you know, any of us is this wonder person on that. But we have to learn how to talk to them. And sometimes we don't know how because maybe the examples you've had in your life, maybe, you know, the things you've been through, maybe you've been a lot of time with the wrong man and it made you angry because you weren't treated right or you saw growing up in your household something that wasn't right you know maybe with your parents I don't you know it could be so many different things y'all but we have to get in order because as we see so many things are coming to the end the um as you can see the um the country is basically gone. It really is. Uh, they, they, they're trying to go cashless. They're trying to do so many different things. You know, um, they're planning more shutdowns. All kind of things are, are happening. And each time they plan these different things, it's, it's so they can take more away from us, okay? And eventually, when we have things happening like wars, rumors of wars and things like that, things that touch these shores or affect us here in this country, okay, it's going to affect our people a lot. So we have to come together as a people. And the one way we, when we come together in the name of the Lord and set aside all of this foolishness, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to use our bodies to uh, please anybody. We don't have to um, be these foul people or anything like that. And we're we're not. All of us. Come on, y'all. All of us. We don't. We don't be doing it. We don't. You know that's uh, more of an anger toward us being a forgotten people. Us being a people that had to sit back when other nations got monies and things like that after we built this na after we built this country with our hands uh the inventions that that were made here were made by our people and the fact that the the, the supremacists had the nerve to take our inventions and put their names on it. it it's a lot to make us angry it is and even now when we go forward and do things they're always coming against us, but it's always going to be because it's, it's two, it's two nations, it's two nations, and we can't rule at the same time. So you're gonna, have, we're gonna always have that fight until we see Christ. All right, when He returns, okay, He's gonna set things in order, but that's gonna be a scary time because He's gonna have to. The, all these things that these people are are building and stuff like that, he's going to smash that stuff up. It's going to be smashed. And he's not going to run for president and all of this kind of stuff. No, it was promised him that he would rule and reign in Jerusalem. And he's not going to, we're not going to be having no voting ballots and all this garbage. Because in all of these years, think about it, in all of these years, that we voted and things like that. Like, shouldn't we be a whole lot further? And and aren't they getting more and more prejudice again? Um, you know, the things that they're doing, they still taking us to jail for no reason or all kind of crazy stuff, right? So it shows you that doesn't work. They do that to make us think that they're on our side, but it's the same devil on both sides. I don't care what party you're a part of. It's not because they don't consult the Lord and and they're not in a leadership status really anyway, because if they were chosen to rule the earth, wouldn't it be a utopia? Wouldn't everything be, you know what I'm saying? Wouldn't they have the wisdom to be able, but it seemed like the more money they get, the more they want it. It's just greed. There's nothing but greed. 
the transportation system, everything. It just is a mess. Every time you turn around, it's the same thing. So if these people were chosen to lead the nation, I'm sorry, but we would not be going through this. And I think more and more of our people are, um, they are awakening to that. So let's see what type of women we need to be as we go on. We're going to go to Proverbs, the 31st chapter. All right. And we're going to start Proverbs 31 at the 10th verse. Okay. And it says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies, right? She's above jewels. She's not a, a, a she's not a, what do, you, what do they call those people? A gold digger. She's not that. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. He trusts in her because she, he, he may, you know, he works and stuff like that, but she comes up with a lot of ideas for how they can put their monies together and start their own business. They listen to us, y'all. They do. If we, you know, talk to them right and not just, how oh, let me take, you know, come on. So that he shall have no need of spoil, right? She's not spending up the money on things that they don't need. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. We know how to make things work and sell things, you know. Sometimes we put together uh, different juices and whatnot, and we can we can sell that. We can make food and, or, you know, have a little cookout and sell dinners. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar, right? So we'll order things, you know, from afar and whatnot and make it work and we'll, we'll sell things. She rises also while it is yet night. So we the first ones up in the morning when it's dark, right? And giveth meat to our household. We up early cooking breakfast, making sure our kids eat, right? And a portion to her maidens, right? the women that work along with her and whatnot. She considereth a field. She considereth a field and buyeth it. While we can, let's do that. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. A lot of our people are into these vineyards and making their wines and things like that. That's a very good thing for our people to get into is wines, all right? Um, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. So the things that we um, that we we gather and whatnot and we sell, we consider this is good. I think I can make some money off of this, right? Her candle goeth not out by night. Sometimes we up late at night, you know, trying to get things together so that we could you know, sell things for the household. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. We usually, we were good at sewing and things like that. And it's not hard to learn how to sew using the sewing machine and stuff like that, right? She stretches out her hand to the poor. We also remember our people that that are in need. You know, our sister girls are, are people that, you know, that we don't even know. That, that need our help, right? Um, we stretch our hands to the poor. Um, we re she reaches her hand her hand to the needy. Wherever we can help out, we try to help out because you you know that's a blessing too, right? So um, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. Even when it's snowing, we will get up and, and 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 get out there and get food for all her household. Are clothed with scarlet, like. You know, our, our household, we see to it that our people look good, right? She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. We as women, we love looking good. We love looking good, right? Silk and purple and all the different things that we like, the jewelry and everything that we like to wear. Her husband is known in the gates. So we make our husbands look good. We make our men, we make them look good, right? Mm -hmm. He's known in the gates, right? When he sitteth among the elders of the land, he's known that like, you know, people say, oh yeah, that's that brother there. 
yeah, he got a good wife and and she, you know, she sees about those kids. They they take care of those kids. Yeah, that's a that's a good woman and a good good man there, right? So these are the things we need to get back to and shut down this other nonsense that they have us doing or thinking that the only way that we can make a good income is to shake our behinds. No, that y'all, you setting yourself up for a fall with that. You really are. And people may tell you, well, that's how you get your money. Yeah, that's how you can be deleted too, okay? Um, you know, be wise, Okay, I'm going to we're going to go to another break and we'll be right back with the next part. Gotcha. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Okay, so now we are at the, let's see what verse we are at. We are at her husband being known in the gates. This is the virtuous woman, right? Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Okay, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. What else does she do that's key here? She openeth, the 26th birth, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. So when you're talking to your husband, all right, open your mouth with wisdom to talk to him. And her, in, her, in her tongue is the law of kindness, being kind. We have to work at that. We have to work at speaking wisdom and kindness. It's, it's a lot of work. It is. Because if we're used to just flipping off, blah, 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 don't tell me I'm, blah, 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 okay? No. We got to stop that, all right? She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness, okay? Idleness, just taking in nonsense or doing nothing a bunch of nothing or listening to a bunch of nothing that is not going to help you we don't have time for that idleness all right but i want us to focus on that she openeth her mouth with wisdom get everything the bible tells you about get the, you know but with you know you need wisdom you you need wisdom okay wisdom and understanding Okay, read through the book of Proverbs. That That's a book of wisdom, okay? Um, and the wisdom of Solomon, too. Read those books, sisters. Please, we got to get together. We need to have, you know, just like I'm, I'm proud of how we, we're doing on social media with following each other and helping each other, but we need to know how to speak and how to, you know, maneuver through uh this world now because that being sassy and all of that kind of stuff that yeah that could get you deleted too you know what i'm saying and i know sometimes people get on your nerve i know that believe me but we gotta learn all right opening our mouth with wisdom and our tongue the law of kindness and looking well to the ways of our household which you which a lot of you a lot of us do okay but we gotta do it in love right speak kind to your kids to everybody practice the law of kindness um her children will rise up and call her blessed you ch you start working on you your children will be like wow my mom is a blessed woman she really is she's blessed my mother when something happens she don't even get upset she just be like all right y'all okay let's talk about it okay meanwhile you done been on your knees, okay, in the midnight hour, late at night when, when your husband and your children are asleep. You walk in the floor praying, God, give me strength. Give me wisdom. Show me how to, you know, help my husband run this household. Show me how to be with my kids. 
and thanking him in advance that he's going to do it for you and studying and reading the word of God. Time out for this foolishness, y'all. We have got to get down to business because when things start to really break out in this land, we think it's crazy now. It's going to be crazy because they're going to attack our people, all right, and get delete our men, all right? I used to wonder, how could this land have so many gangs when they have military? But there's something behind that, too. And when the time comes, a lot of our young men are going to be deleted, for real. It's going to be really, really sad. It's sad enough now, you know, but... And even a lot of the big C churches are closing because people don't want to believe those lies no more in there. We want to know who are the people of the Bible and that's us and what we should be doing now. They want to understand the prophecies that were written for this day and time. Time out for thinking that, oh, well, we're going to be caught up real soon. We're not going to have to go through this. You're going through it now. Okay, you're going through it. Okay, and we're going to be going through it till Christ cracks the sky. And when he cracks the sky at that time, it's going to be for vengeance. It's not going to be no, you know, all right, y'all come away. It ain't going to be that. That's not the time that that's going to happen. Okay, so you got to get under a leader that knows a Bible prophecy. Okay, and that's not what's what it is. We've been made to believe that so that we'll think, oh, well, we don't have to do anything because this is not really what the Bible was talking about. You don't see that with all these pandemics and this and that and the other going on. Just this week, the six year old shooting the teacher, um, the teacher in, in the other state uh, passing out from fentanyl. And all these different things that are in the news, people just dropping off the face of the earth. You don't see that? You, if you think that's just, well, that's been happening. Not at these measures, it hasn't. Every day you see these little kids going to school. They're, they're traumatized. What six-year-old would come to school with a gun? Think about it. A gun at six? I didn't even know what a gun was, y'all. I knew maybe, maybe a water gun <laughs> at six years old. And everybody's saying that the teacher will make it through, but nobody's saying nothing about the kid. What got that kid the, where he was in an altercation with the teacher? Something's not right, y'all. We're living in these days, the last days, where they're calling right wrong and calling wrong right. Something wrong is it's something wrong. Six year olds don't just wake up and do that. Uh uh. Something's wrong. Okay. Teachers coming to school and and passing out, you know, over drug overdose. And and, and people riding around selling weed in trucks. That can't be a good thing, y'all. That you think that that's going to make the neighborhoods, oh, it's going to make the neighborhoods great. Everybody can just get some weed and we'll be all right. Are you kidding me? No, that's just a way for certain people to make more money, even though they'll bring it off in the beginning as, well, they're not going to get any money from it. If you think that's true, I got some land I want to sell you, okay, because that's, that's not the truth. All right. Wait till this thing get good and and, and revved up. You want to see something and all the other things that they coming up with this AI and all of this stuff. After a while, when you, people will be zombies around here. OK, so y'all better y'all better wake up and smell the coffee because it's burning. Get ready. All right. The Lord is soon to come. We don't have much more time. Y'all, we don't. And this Babylon, it's, Babylon is finished. This place is finished. You got states that are pulling out already. And just within a few years, they're going to announce it. They're going to join up with other uh, countries and stuff like that. So this is not even going to be the land that we knew. It's already dismantled. They don't want to tell you that. So sisters, 
we have a high responsibility. We have to get it together. And I'm in your corner. I'm a sister myself. You know what I'm saying? We are Hebrew Israelite women. We have to get it together. We, we can't just keep going on this nonsense that they keep telling us it, 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 it's not going to work. It's not. All right. And it's not working. Oh, it's not working. Okay. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. If you get with the Lord, your husband will, he'll even be like, I'm proud of you, baby. I'm proud. Mm -hmm. You know? So like I said in my video earlier, you know, in the one before this, don't get with a man because of how much money he makes. He may make less than you. He may have a smaller um, salary than you, but get together, put your monies together and start opening up your own businesses. Whatever it is that y'all do well, get together, you know, and women pray for them. Pray for our men. They've been through a lot. And they still going through a lot. We still living in a day and time. They can't even walk down the street good. And, and they trying to blame them for this and blame them for that. And picking them up for this and picking them up for that. When they, a lot of them haven't even done anything. Okay, so we have to be their backbone. We have to help as well as they have to too. But right now I'm talking to us. Get that law of kindness in your tongue. For real. We got to get to where they can't, we, we can't with letting these people get a reaction out of us every, every five minutes. We, and, and it's tempting. It is because it does make you angry that, you know, um, different things happen and we're expected not to say anything, but it's not what we say is how we say. All right. And be kind. And, you know, the Bible talks about that. Be kind and affectionate one toward another. This is what God looks for because we're not going to have that in the kingdom. We are the kingdom. The kingdom is in us. We're kingdom people. When Christ return, we're going to be peaceful. We ain't got time for no foolishness. We don't. All right. Um, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So people may be favored over you and they may look more beautiful than you do. But if you fear the Lord, that's who God prays. That's who God brings praise to. If you fear the Lord and you walk in his laws, statutes and commandments, you walk in the spirit of the Lord. That's who the Lord recognizes you. Not these people that, you know, you know, I got to get my money now. I got to do this. I got to do that. And are living disgraceful lives, you know. And like I said, I'm not blaming them. But at some point, you have to wake up and say, listen, I got to stop this. You know, I know I grew up like this, but mm -mm, I got to work my way out. of. You know, I got to ask God for help. And the sisters around me, we got to get together. We got to get out of this. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Give her what she's worth. Give her what she's worth. This is the fruit of her own hands. Give her what she's worth. And let her own works, the good that she does, let it praise her everywhere she go. That people will be able to say nothing but good about us. They, Whereas they talked about us like a dog. Oh, them Hebrew Israelite woman, they ain't no good. They this, they that, they the other. But if the fruit of our hands, the law of kindness in our mouth, in our tongue, the things that we say and do and stuff like that, God be praising. We got to keep working at it because we starting from the bottom. We, we really are. We're starting from the bottom. I'm not saying that none of our women are like this, but y'all come on now. <laughs> we got a long way to go. And we got we to gotta start somewhere. We got to keep it up because we have to teach the young ladies behind us, the ones that are coming up after us, how uh, we, you know, how we're supposed to be. And we want them to grow up and teach their children how they're women, 
how they're supposed to be. And you, you're you also that example for the young men. When they see you, they see who they're going to want in the, in the future as a wife. So, I, I'm, you know, as long as the Lord have me continuing this series, you know, I, I understand, y'all. I understand uh, so many things. As I said in uh, the video, I believe last a couple, two videos ago, some of us have been through some things. Some people have been raped by their fathers, their uncles, their brothers. Um, all kind of things have happened to our women, um, not just in slavery, but slavery. Definitely, uh, our women were raped to wipe out our race. That's that's what a lot of that was, too, was to fill these lusty people's sexual desires. All right. They they were wicked, okay? And it was, you know, being raped is to fill people's wicked sexual desires, all right? And a lot of, you know, and within the, the family too, because our men were raped when we came here and were enslaved. To be made an example of the white slave masters would buck break them by letting men Letting them, letting the white men have have sex with them in front of everybody, which which shows you they can't be a superior race doing that. Like really, if God made us where we supposed to be male and female, then why would you rape our, our women plus have plus force yourself on men, force yourself on women? No, you're not chosen. You're not. So we carry it within our, our families have carried a lot of spirits that ain't right. And those spirits got to leave our families. Okay, somebody has to wake up and say, mm, that that's not going to go on from this generation forward. We ain't doing that. That's, that's not going to happen to our people anymore. We're going to be on top of it. We're going to get in front of it and whatever else we got to do. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. All right. And the Lord is going to intervene for us. So, sisters, we have got to work at who we are. We have we have got to stop letting these people, um, you know, be right about anything, even though it's not true that all of us are, that we're all bad people. You know, that we're all nasty and all of that kind of stuff because they'll never admit what they do to antagonize us. Okay. Uh, the Karens and the different ones that do nasty things to get a rise out of us. All right. Remember, all the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities, people that rule. The rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. Spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. Um, all of these dark forces that want to keep us down, that want to keep us thinking that we're only as good as being in the ghetto or we're only as good as being in jail or we're only as good as, you know, um, talking against our people in rap videos, cussing cussing our people out, calling each other uh, hoes and bees and all of that kind of stuff. Nah, stop it. It's time for us to stop all of that. Okay, no, come back to our God. Our God is not says, yeah, boy, yeah. But, uh, you know, that's not who we serve. We serve the most high God. And he sent Christ to die for our sins so that he could bring us back to the knowledge and the admonition of the Lord. Because we're going to be the ones, once Christ returns and he gets things in order, we're going to bring the nations back to the worship of the Lord. We've been chosen to do that. We're not better than anybody, but we were chosen to do that from the foundation of the world. We were chosen to do that. And to judge the fallen angels. Because the fallen angels have a lot to do with the, the craziness that's going on in the world today. With them falling, um, 
uh, calling themselves getting wives and doing their own thing that the Lord never told them to do. Okay, so we have got to get back to where we fell from. All right, so if we just keep at it, y'all, we got to keep at it. You know, we got to work on our health. Our, you know, go back to the gym, like I said earlier in the in the uh, video, I believe before swimming as an exercise. We 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 got to go back to that. All right. Um, discussing the water classes and things like that that are available to us at the water gym. That's a that's a business tip too. You could do that in the church. You could do that at your home. You could have a gal call together a gathering. Call together a gathering. Y'all ain't even got to go to each other's houses. All of this stuff we got online, we can get together in in, in a um with a Zoom or something like that, and and, and encourage each other. And like I said, be patient with yourself. Two pounds a month. Give yourself that. Say, I want to lose two pounds a month. Because some months you probably go over. Because that's not a whole lot. Right? So you got 52 weeks in the year. Right? 52 weeks in the year. Right? 12 months. <laughs> 12 months. Can you imagine? If you lose two pounds. Oh, a month. That's 24 pounds you have lost in a year, which is very healthy, though, because, you know, you don't want to lose too much at one time because that can make you sick or you can uh, end up going back from, you know, what where you were. You know, you can end up gaining the weight back because you have to learn the, the things that you need. Like I said, I'm going to just doing the fruits and vegetables during the day. I want a snack, it's a food or a vegetable. No more of that other stuff, you know. But it's something that you got to fight to keep keep up, you know, and back to the gym, you know, on the treadmill, on swimming, everything, all right? So, we, we God bless you, God keep you is my prayer, sisters. Please hold on. Get to know the Lord if you don't know him, all right? God bless you. God keep you as my prayer. Check me out on YouTube, Instagram, all of my um, platforms. Like and share my videos on YouTube. Thank you all for joining the YouTube channel. Facebook pictures and videos. Instagram, HebrewConnect.tv, all of it. All right. Every Saturday, 7 to 8 p.m., check me out on BronxNet, channel 951, 2137, the Inspire channel, your cable channels, and Quam Yasharala, Quam, rise up. Rise up and share this. Share the video. Share this with each other and sit down and talk about it and go over the scriptures that I've given you. All right. God bless you. God keep you as my prayer. You stay balanced and quam, Yasharala. Quam. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word to a sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware. Didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal.